Hey, hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. Today we're talking about uh, democratizing real-time analytics with keylines and we're going to be hearing from Logtrust on uh, their software product. So thanks for joining. Um, before we get started, just um, a couple of uh, housekeeping tips. So first of all, uh, you should find that you are muted. We, uh, we can't hear you, but you can hear us. Uh, that's just so we can keep the noise down, but we'd really like to uh, keep this session interactive. So please do, if you have any questions, uh, send them to us using the uh, Q&A feature of the webinar. Uh, type in your questions, uh, whether they're for, uh, for me or for David, and uh, we will answer those at the end of the webinar. We're going to um, uh, present for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll have the Q&A at the end. So please send those in. Um, and the other uh, point is uh, we are recording this webinar, um, so uh, we'll be making that available um, in a few days' time for people to, uh, to access uh, later on. With that said, we'll get started with the webinar. Just some introductions. My name's Dan Williams. I'm a product manager here at Cambridge Intelligence. Um, and uh, I'm joined today by my co-presenter, David Cifuentes from Logtrust. Uh, David's going to be doing most of the talking today. Uh, Logtrust are a... Uh, a partner of Keylines. They, they use the Keylines technology from Cambridge Intelligence and uh, they'll be showing us a little bit about how they've used that technology in their product. Um, so you'll hear much more from David later on. Uh, what I wanted to do before we uh, get into that, uh, here's the agenda on the screen, um, I'm going to uh, give a, just a quick introduction to graphs and some of the challenges around visualizing graph data, particularly for real-time data, uh, just to set the scene. Um, then I'll hand over to David, who will talk about the LogTrust platform, um, and I'll wrap up, as I say, in about half an hour with some uh, a little bit more information about the Keylines toolkit, uh, and then we'll have those uh, question and answers at the end. So that's the plan for the day. Uh, as I said, I wanted to just give a bit of background on graph visualization. I imagine most people on the call know what graph uh, data is, but for those who don't, it's basically a data model of uh, nodes and links. Nodes might be things like people or places, um, and uh, links might represent relationships, like Dan is a colleague of Andrew here, uh, or they might represent events, like this phone called this phone at a certain time. Um, and in a graph data model, those links are every bit as important as the, uh, as the nodes. The links are a crucial part of the data. And this kind of data structure is being found everywhere, uh, increasingly more so, uh, whether it's social networks, financial networks, uh, investigative challenges like fraud or, or criminal or law enforcement investigations. Um, it's also behind the scenes in many of the technologies you use. You might not even realize you're using technology that has a graph engine behind it. Uh, recommendation engines are a good example. Uh, when you buy something on a shopping website, uh, there's a good chance there's a graph database behind the scenes answering questions like uh, what are the buying patterns of people like me and what uh, what are they buying. Um, so uh, this technology is, is, is being used increasingly and it, it has a lot of advantages over traditional databases. Traditional uh, relational databases are very good at answering questions like um, show me all of the people who work at Cambridge Intelligence. They're not so good at ans answering questions like uh, who at Cambridge Intelligence is an important person in the network, or um, uh, you know who has similar buying patterns to Dan um, in the network. Uh, that's where graph technologies excel, and sometimes uh, they work behind the scenes, but in other cases, it's really valuable to visualize them, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so why visualize them? Well, you can see here's a picture of, uh, of a small network. This is a network of people and their email communications, and uh, just by looking at it, hopefully you can you can get a really good sense of what's going on here. You should be able to spot patterns and, and gain insights that would be very difficult to get if you were looking at a uh, traditional database or a spreadsheet. So for example, if you look at uh, Bill over here on the right hand side, straight away you can see he's somebody who sends a lot of emails out but doesn't get very much in return to a particular group of people. Or if I asked you, find me a group of people who are very closely connected and email each other regularly, Again, your eye is probably drawn to this cluster, this clique of people down here at the bottom. Uh, it's very easy to spot these things uh, when you look at the graph uh, visualized. And those are insights that would be very difficult to get um, from a traditional database. So that's the, uh, that's the idea. That's the, uh, the benefit of it. Um, 
However, it's not easy. It's not easy to produce a picture like this. Um, it's actually quite difficult. And some of the challenges I've listed here, um, particularly challenges when you're talking about big data and when you're talking about real time data, which is what you're going to hear about from David. Um, so, you know, some of the challenges, a challenge would be uh, the data modeling challenge. How do we, how do we represent any data um, on a chart, no matter where it's coming from? How do we decide what's a node and what's a link so that we can turn our our raw data into this view. There are challenges around analytics. How do we figure out uh, how to lay this uh, picture out? Um, this, uh, this isn't a random picture. This has been carefully figured out that we want to put people close to each other who are closely related to each other, but we don't want things to be too close that they overlap and it's hard to see. Uh, and how do we decide to draw these people in big because they're somehow important to the network? They're uh, gatekeepers between groups, for example. So uh, you have to think about those analytics. You have to think about interactions. If we're talking about big data, um, and if we're talking about real-time data, then there's a huge amount more than this. This is a very small part. You might have millions or even billions of nodes in your, your data set. Um, so how does the user bring in data uh, when, when they need it? Maybe clicking on nodes to expand the network out and see more. You've got to think about those interactions. And you've got to think about the visual styling, the look and feel of it. Uh, it's very easy to do this kind of thing badly and overwhelm the user with just a huge amount of confusing information. Um, so you have to really think about the look of these charts as well. So those are just some of the challenges to, to doing a good job of visualizing graphs. Uh, and that's where Keylines fits in, just to introduce us very quickly. Keylines is our product here at Cambridge Intelligence. Um, it's a toolkit for allowing you to build graph visualizations into your applications. Um, I won't say any more about it now. I'll, I'll come back at the end and do that. Um, but uh, I'll hand over now to David, who's going to tell us a little bit about how they've used Keylines at, uh, at LogTrust. And while I hand over to David, just um, a final uh, reminder, please do ask questions if you have any um, for me or for David. Send them in via the uh, chat, uh, the Q&A function, uh, and we will answer those questions at the end. Uh, so that's it from me. I'm going to hand over to you, David. Thank you, thank you very much, Dan. Um, um, we have we have been working in order to uh, give like a, a solution to all those challenges that you have mentioned before. Um, Logtrust provides the ability to ingest, store, and analyze massive, uh, varied, and dynamic data, um, and 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 we do it at a at a very high speed. Um, we offer uh, three different uh, models, so uh, you, we can do that. Um, through its flexible cloud, uh, full on-premise, and also uh, through a hybrid deployment. Um, our mission, as, as Dan mentioned before, um, is to democratize real-time big data tools for companies of any se size and sector, allowing them to maximize their business value by um, security intelligence, infrastructure monitoring, compliance, um, customer behavior, analytics, and, and business monitoring uh, solutions also. Um, so uh, what we have been doing is uh, to provide like a, a big data analytics platform that um, have like all all those um, advantages of of uh, being able to collect information from any data source and then without any um, complex coding or with a very low code enable any uh, non technical users to be able to slice and dice and analyze the data. In a, in a very easy way. Um, one of our um, differentiators against like other big data analytics tools is our, uh, that we are faster and closer to real time than uh, most of them. Uh, I, I will say that, that all of them. And uh, that advantage is basically because of the way we store the data. We store everything in its renal format and we don't uh, duplicate the information or index the information in, in the traditional way uh, or in the map, map reduced way. Um, we're able to uh, ingest uh, terabytes or petabytes of information in its real format and uh, our search engine is capable to uh, search and query up to a million events per second per core. Um, one of our, our the, the best advantages and something that was very important for us was to uh, make it um, accessible to any company. And one of the um, 
uh, main uh, advantages is that it, uh, this platform scales linearly. Um, most of the big data platforms, in order to help the search engine, you know, like to find all the data that they have been collecting, they duplicate the information several times. Uh, we, we don't do that. We have like a compression rate from up to 1 to 20, uh, and that allows us to scale linearly. So you can uh, start like using our platform with a small set of data, and then uh, with the time, you know, like as, as the data starts growing, uh, you can uh, it scales uh, at, at a very, in a very easy and, and affordable way. Um, let me show you uh, now one of our, our different use cases. So, um, Log Trust, you know, like the name, uh, maybe it can, it can mean, you know, like that we are, um, we have been developed or just for uh, ingesting log files. But we, but we basically are able to. Um, to collect any kind of, of data feeds. Um, also, uh, some images that are in base 64. Uh, and because of that, uh, we're uh, able to uh, provide a platform that some of our customers are using for security intelligence to identify um, uh, attacks and be able to um, implement like some proactive monitoring. Um, and also uh, to identify patterns and user behaviors. Uh, and that's why we um, are also considered uh, for uh, behavioral analytics. Um, a lot of other uh, companies are sending information from all the different metrics uh, and information um, generated by all the different systems, security devices, network devices. And they're using us for uh, business and IT monitoring. Um, in the business uh, case, they basically send information from all the application servers, all the CRMs, uh, in order to have insights about the, about the um, operation of their business. Uh, big data analytics, um, as, as I mentioned before, because of our metrics, uh, we consider ourselves as big data, uh, a, a, as a big data product. And we're, right now, like there are, we have also customers that are sending uh, petabytes of information uh, every day and and with log trust they're able to give give access to more than a hundred users uh, simultaneously you know like to search and and try to find like um, key things and, and insights you know like in in that in that um, data that they're sending and finally the the other use case is compliance um, as Dan say um, we store everything in, in its renal format and I'm going to show you uh, during the demo how we can uh, define a data model or a schema basically on the fly. Still, when, when we uh, store everything in this original format, what we do is we provide um, different views in order to make it easier for the, any non-technical user to slice and dice the data and understand what is happening. Um, a little bit about LogTrust. Uh, LogTrust is a... Is a um, it's a company that was uh, founded in Spain, but uh, right now our headquarters are in Sunnyvale, California. Uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, or, or customers, you know, like from different markets. Um, some of them, you know, like are using us uh, for IT monitoring and basically for all the different use cases uh, that I was mentioning before. But we have <clears throat> uh, we have customers uh, around the globe uh, in Europe. Uh, in the United States, in Asia, um, and, and we're looking forward, you know, like to find like some some customers soon in in Australia and Africa. Okay, um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go and show you um, the platform and how uh, we have integrated uh, the Keylines tool. That definitely is something uh, you know that we that we really uh, appreciate, and and it has added uh, a lot of value to our platform. Um, right now, I'm, I'm showing you uh, the LogTrust platform, and, and in this account, uh, we're uh, collecting information uh, from authentication servers, from antivirus, from common event format. This information is coming from other SIM tools like ArcSight. Um, we are collecting information from security devices like firewalls, uh, from network devices that it might be like routers or switches. We receive this information in uh, NetFlow. We are collecting information from Twitter. So you, you basically can send any kind of information that it is uh, text-based. Uh, we're also uh, 
collecting information from web servers. So there are other um, customers that are using us for web analytics in order to augment uh, other tools like Google Analytics or Omniture. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and and show you some of the use cases a little bit further. Um, you can access all this information using this global search. The, in this global search, it will work like a, as a Google. Basically, you will be able to look for all the events, for example, that contains uh, an, a specific word, and it will show you right away, you know, like all the information or all the events that you have received that contains the, the night that you can see right here. Um, as you can see, uh, we in, in this uh, column message, we are storing everything in its original format as, as we receive it from the different uh, data sources. In, in this case, this um, login denied event is coming from a, from a firewall. And uh, what, what, what we can do on the fly, basically, when we execute a query, is to uh, parse that information in order to um, show uh, an, a structured view of all the data. So you can see here uh, the different actions, the top 10 uh, sur or source IPs or IP addresses, you know, like that are, have been denied or, or allowed by the firewall and so on. And this, um, this way, you know, like is, is very helpful and useful for the users to understand what is, what is happening. Basically, this will allow them to uh, apply filters. For example, if they want to see just the login denied, they can right away um, apply a filter, they can create new columns, so based on a source IP, for example, I can apply a filter just to see the public IPs, and uh, we also can enrich the data, so based on the source IP, for example, you can create a new column and see the country of that IP. So I'm going to look in, in the set of operations that we offer, and what we have done here is, I'm scrolling to the right, is on the fly, in real time, uh, we are based on the source IP, extracting the the, the country uh, of that of that um, IP address. Um, in this case, we're watching information from from a firewall that is a, a security device, but we are also able to collect information uh, from applications or any other data sources. In this case, uh, for example, we have information. Uh, from flights, uh, all the flights that are in North America, and and these data sets uh, tell me the information of the or airport of origin, the airport of destination, uh, the different airlines, uh, the departure delayed in times, uh, and other information like the uh, type of um, plane, uh, that the the tail number also, and and additional information. So based on this, uh, I'm going to show you right now how we. Um, have been uh, integrated uh, the Keylines Toolkit in order to not just you know like provide a, a view that it looks like a spreadsheet in order to filter, but take advantage you know like of of of, of the visualizations and some graphics in order to understand, for example, in this data set what is what is happening. So uh, what I have done here is I have created like a set of of, of filters, um, and then I have made a, a, a group by. And this aggregation allowed me uh, to see, for example, um, the airports of origin and destination and the departure of delay. Uh, right now, what, when you have uh, done the aggregation, you just have to uh, go right here, select the chart, and we have like different uh, graphics or visualizations that we offer. In this case, I'm going to select uh, the graph diagram. That is the one that we have um, integrated. I'm gonna delete. I'm gonna delete this, and I'm gonna show you how you can uh, simply uh, one after after ingesting the information and then slicing or doing the aggregation, you can represent that graphically in the Keylines uh, library. So I'm gonna drag and drop the airport of origin. I'm gonna do the same with the airport of destination. I just have to um, take the header, the column, and just drag it to the to this area. I'm gonna, uh, now that we have the latitude and the longitude, I'm gonna also drag it. I'm gonna do the same with the destination. And finally, as the metric, I'm gonna drag the departure delay. And basically what we're gonna 
analyzed here is the delay from the airport of origin and the destination. As you saw before, we have uh, the airport of origin in orange, the destination in green. And once we apply that, the graph diagram will represent me uh, all the connections and, and the delays. So for example, here from Chicago, we can see, I'm going to, I'm going to expand that view to show you and we can see like all the different connections. It still is very difficult, you know, like to understand what is happening, but as, as we have also drag and drop the coordinates, we can enable this map mode. I'm going to enable this setting that comes included in the, in the key lines library. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to, for example, select in order to analyze uh, from Chicago, like all the different delays to the destinations that I, that I have. I'm going to do it again. And now we can see very clearly all the destinations and the delays. Um, we can configure here. Um, we can change the node size. We can change also the link width. So these basically are filters that we can we can apply. And there's another feature that is very interesting and it is this time bar. So I'm going to enable this selection, this mode that basically will allow me uh, to see uh, how uh, those delays evolve, you know, like during a specific uh, period of time. So for example, during this uh, 15 days from December uh, 5 until the 11, I'm going to I'm going to see how this uh, delay has changed. Uh, I don't know like, if you can notice, you know, like there has been like some connections that have disappeared with the time. So this is also uh, a very um, easy way, you know, like to identify patterns and, and understand uh, what is happening. I'm going to, I'm going to now uh, show you um, other, other interesting things that you can do. So you can apply some filters directly um, in the, in, in our interface. So for example, if you want to see just the flights from one specific airline, from, for example, from United, I can apply a filter and we can uh, recreate again uh, the chart, the graph diagram. And we also can uh, add this, this new variable. So uh, this, this library allowed me not just, you know, like to represent two or three values, but also many, many other different values. So I'm, I'm going to just do the same very quickly. Let me, let me delete this. And finally, I'm going to see now the airline, you know, like that I have had. If I remove, for example, the filter, we will be able to see all the flights, not just from uh, United Airlines, but also from all the other airlines and for example, here I can analyze or identify very quickly um, all the all the delays, like where the more happening in this case in American Airlines. Uh, but and just to give you as to give you another example, I can identify very quickly the origin and destinations to what airline it um, belongs. In this case, to Alaska Airlines. Okay, so uh, this was one of the use cases. It is just, you know, like to see um, how uh, your business is, is performing and, and take actions. Uh, Logtrust also allows you uh, to define alerts or to create alerts. So, for, for example, if you want to be aware uh, when a fly is, has like a delay that is greater than, for example, 60 minutes, one hour, you can apply a filter right away, and once every, one of these uh, or one of uh, one of the flights uh, have like a delay or greater than one hour, you can define an alert right away, and the and the platform will will uh, let you know when this is happening. Um, I'm going to show you now a different use case. Um, it is more focused in order to identify um, uh, security and and see, for example how um, you, you are able, you know, like to use uh, the, same, the same graph in order to identify when a user is trying to access a machine and he doesn't have permissions. Um, so basically what I have been doing, what I'm showing you right now is a different data set that is coming from all the events from uh, authentication devices. Uh, and I'm gonna make like a, an, an aggregation uh, here by the uh, device that uh, it is, uh, registering like all or, or, or sending like all the events 
the action that has been detected, a login or a fail, the name of the machine, the application that they're trying to access, the name of the user, and the source, the source IP. So using all these fields, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the exact same diagram that we showed before, the graph diagram. And as the metric, I'm just going to drag and drop the count in order to see the, the number of attempts that that user has, has done. So I'm going to assume in and I'm going to explain you now like what we're looking right, right here. So um, in this yeah, green, we can see the two different actions that we have. For example, the fail logins. And the fail logins shows me like from what IP addresses, you know, like they're trying, you know, like to access my machine. If I uh, drill in again, I will be able to see the name of the users that are trying, have been trying, you know, like to access those machines. And in red, as you can see here, I can see uh, the application. So they are, tr they have been trying to access via SSH um, these machines, these local hosts, all the ones that are in green, with the user that are in in purple. And finally, I can I can see if this are, is a Unix machine or if the IP address, you know, like that it belongs. So um, you will be able to understand using this diagram very easily uh, the number of attempts, uh, fail and, and successful attempts, you know, like of logging uh, into the, all the machines. It doesn't matter how many machines do you have. You will be able to um, make it uh, understand uh, what is what is the behavior, and you can use this for for security purposes. Uh, okay, finally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you an application. So um, let me explain you a little bit, you know, like what we have done here. All the graphics that we have, um, that we offer, um, you can put them on a, on a dashboard. A dashboard is basically a layout uh, that, uh, that you can use in order to create a report so uh, you can select different um, visualizations like tables, images, uh, gauge meters, heat calendars, and so on. And uh, then you can place them in the dashboard and just uh, resize them or change the look and feel of them, change the distribution. If you want to put this table like at the right, you just have to dr drag and drop all the different widgets. And once you have created your dashboard, you can publish it in order to share it with an, with other users, and that's uh, basically what we have been do, what we did uh, in this case. Um, this is a specifically um, um, a use case of a customer uh, that uh, was looking for understanding or to they they wanted to improve the quality of service. Um, in order to solve issues surrounding uh, broadband digital television server service. Um, so what we have here in these heat calendars is uh, the amount of audience that they have uh, every hour uh, during these uh, 15 days. And in, in these other two heat calendars, what they can see is the amount of errors that they had in the broadcast TV and also in the video on demand. So basically, these are the errors in 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 broadcast and the and the amount of errors in unicast uh, and and they were able to identify like uh, every hour. Um, so this was critical for them because um, they wanted they were they were not they they have been like implementing a lot of different devices and monitoring tools, but they wanted to have like a. a a holistic view of, of what was happening because there are like so many different devices that are involved in this in this um, transmission of the of the television you know like there are like uh, the content uh, the content servers there are after that there are like many uh, aggregation nodes access nodes and finally the set of boxes that are the ones that deliver the the signal to the to the customers or or the viewers. So it was very challenging for them to identify in what part or what was the device that was uh, causing the, the the issues or the amount of errors that they were looking at. Um, and they and they um, tried, you know, like to or evaluate different tools. And and finally, uh, Luxus was the only one that uh, gave them, you know, like enough. Um, enough performance in order to uh, collect information uh, from more than 10 million 
set of boxes and, and, and enable them uh, to, to do this kind of analysis. Um, so what we did was uh, we create an application or a dashboard where they will be able to identify, for example, what are, where are the uh, clients that are having more errors in the live TV or also in the video on demand, um, in, in what states uh, those errors are happening. So if I increase here, for example, most of them, they, they have some errors here in California in these two aggregation nodes. And we also offer like some other visualizations like this cell diagram where they will be able to um, not just like visualize all the states, but also they, they can order uh, the states based on the amount of errors that they have and then drill in. So they can see, for example, in California, all the aggregation nodes that they have and in each one aggregation node, um, the access nodes that are receiving information and finally the local nodes. So uh, what we have, what we did here was uh, to take advantage of that beautiful graph uh, that uh, Keylines provides. And what we did was apply, we offer, include a filter here in order to be able to analyze, for example, in two different states, uh, how is, is the network and the, and the performance um, of, of the different devices involved in this, in this distribution. So I'm going to go now and click here in analysis. And, and we have embedded in this application the graph diagram that will show you how the television signal is distributed from the content delivery network to the aggregation nodes in the different states, from the aggregation nodes to the access nodes, and finally to the local nodes. In order to uh, make it easy for you to understand, uh, this graph also provides you um, a different view. You can uh, select this hierarchical mode that will show you exactly, you know, like how the signal is being distributed, you know, like to aggregation nodes and from aggregation nodes to access nodes and finally to the local nodes. In this case, all this analysis and the, and the size of the, of the nodes depends on the amount of errors that they are uh, having. We can also enable the map mode on. And now here we, we will be able to identify uh, uh, and, and see if clearly um, the aggregation nodes in different states. So all these ones that are in California, these ones in Colorado. And here we can also drill in, for example, in this aggregation node to see like how th this is being distributed to the access nodes and finally um, to the local nodes. In this case, in the application, they, um, this, uh, this graph is allowing them to understand, you know, like where are the issues happening. And once they have identified one ag aggregation node that is causing issues, they can go uh, to this tab aggregation. They can see, select the aggregation node, for example, this one, and analyze specifically um, in, in what period of time or what moment of time uh, that happened and what was uh, the access nodes, you know, like that were involved in, in this transmission of the data. Um, so this is how we have integrated um, this, uh, this toolkit. Um, it, I, it, it has been like uh, very useful for us. It has been very useful for all our customers and, and they are using it in so many different uh, ways and so many different use cases, um, like for security purposes, um, quality of service, in this case, and, and also uh, as many use cases as you wanted. As I mentioned you before, we're collecting information also from Twitter uh, in order to have like web analytics. So imagine, you know, like the, the amount of different use cases that you can, that you can apply to this, to this uh, work. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now, you know, go back, uh, give control to Dan. Thank you very much. And, and again, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy, you know, like to answer them at the, at the end of the session. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, David. Thanks for the uh, great demonstration and uh, uh, really nice uh, implementation of uh, key lines there. I especially like the way you've allowed users to create the chart on the fly and, and define the chart as they go. It's uh, really impressive. So I just want to wrap up now before the Q&A session um, with a bit of background. As I say, if you have any questions, now is the time. Please send them in and we will answer them very shortly. I uh, just wanted to 
finally wrap up again for those of you who are interested in knowing more about the technology behind those graph visualizations uh, key lines uh, is the uh, toolkit that uh, uh, we produce and um, I really just wanted to kind of comment if you're thinking uh, you know can I make use of this myself how will it fit in with my own application uh, a couple of points to make there you know first of all Keylines is designed to work with any data source uh, you can see some examples of graph databases there on the left hand side it doesn't have to work with graph databases as you saw from David um, you can use it on any any data uh, source you, you like um, we, uh, we, we maintain uh, uh, neutrality with regards to data we also want to allow you to have complete control over the look and feel. So, you know, what we saw from David was a very, very slick integration into LogTrust. It felt like it was all part of the same application. Didn't feel like you were using uh, someone else's tool. And that's really important as well. So we give you a lot of control over the look and feel so that you can fit in with your own application. Um, many of the uh, people who use keylines in their application, you don't even realize it's keylines. It feels like part of, uh, of the application itself. And that's really important. So um, Keylines is very flexible. That's the, uh, the key message there. Uh, and if you want to know more, um, uh, here are some, uh, some contact details. You'll feel free to contact me or David directly. Our contact details are there. But uh, very often, the next thing people want to do is, is, is use the software and play with it. Um, so there are Keylines free trials available uh, on our website. Uh, and you can get in touch with LogTrust as well if you're interested in trying their software or getting a personalized demo as well. So um, do get in touch with, uh, with either of us if you want to know more. Uh, so uh, with that, thanks very much again to David for the uh, great presentation. And we'll move on to the uh, question and answer session. Uh, thanks to those of you who've sent questions in already. That's fantastic. We'll uh, go through those. And um, uh, if you have any more, uh, now is the time to get them in. We've got uh, a few more minutes left before the end of the session. Uh, so the first question, um, and I think this is probably one for, uh, for David, um, is uh, what are the performance limitations and considerations? So David, you talked a bit about a large amount of data there. Uh, can you say anything about uh, performance? Yeah, um, it, that, that is definitely, you know, like one of the main challenges that all the, all the big data products have. And, and um, well, the way, you know, like uh, other products have been handling is that um, they basically um, age or they archive the information in order to reduce the amount of data that the search engine is capable you know like to to query um in in log trust we have been able you know like to uh, to um, implement um uh, an algorithm that allows us you know like to query and search in all the data that we have uh, received like from the beginning of the time so um, it, it has been challenging, but it has uh, we, we have been able you know like to sort that out. And at the same time, uh, we have been like integrating uh, all these visualizations, um, the ones you know like that give us you know like that good performance. And and the Keylines toolkit, you know, like as as I showed you before, um, performs like really well in in all the bigger uh, volumes of data. So we tried like other alternatives. Uh, but definitely this, this toolkit was the, the one, you know, like that gave us like a good performance in order to uh, be able to query and visualize like uh, large volumes of data. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, another question is uh, IoT data, so uh, Internet of Things data um, is a big issue. Um, has LogTrust been used for monitoring device data before? Yes. Um, yeah, we, we have like different... Um, uh, use cases or use yeah like uh, case studies uh, we are collecting information uh, for example from wind farms um, and many other uh, sensors you know like that are sending the information as raw data and and we have been able you know like uh, to collect that and, and make uh, and provide like analytics and visibility and monitoring and and be able to detect um, you know, like what is happening. Um, the biggest differentiator I think right here is that uh, each one of the vendors or the different technologies, they provide like their own monitoring solution, but um, most of the customers have like different or varieties of different brands of sensors and, and they want to have like everything in a single pane of glass. And that's why we are offering um, or what, that's why we feel like a, as a very good alternative for them. And, and at the same time, uh, you know, like the flexibility that the, that the visualization, you know, like from, from Keylands provide us, you know, like it has been very helpful in order to achieve, you know, like uh, 
good results, you know, like of, of those, uh, of the analytics, you know, like that we can provide in, in that market. Okay, fantastic. Um, uh, there's a question, uh, what is the advantage of a graph compared to the other visualization approaches? I guess I talked a little bit about that from a key lines point of view, but David, I don't know if you have anything to add on, on the advantages of uh, the graph view compared to others? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have like a lot of, uh, we have many competitors that are open source and there are like a, bu a bunch of um, um, visualizations or graph libraries uh, like in the, in, in, in the, in the internet. Uh, but uh, once, once again, you know, like the performance, you know, like it is, it is a key point, you know, like when you want to uh, display or render in a browser, in a web application, uh, big volumes of data and have, um, and, and be able, you know, like to, to see, you know, like um, how, how those nodes are connected um, and, and, you know, like still when the nodes, you know, like maybe there are like a hundred nodes on the screen underneath. There's are huge volumes of data feeding, you know, like that that graph, and the graph has to perform like properly in order to render and don't like consume all the memory of the browser. Um, so it is it is it is very important, you know, like in order to get have like good results, in order to take a, advantage of a, of a good um, a good library or a good toolkit, and that's why we we implemented or we integrate in our solution um, keylines. Great, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for that. And uh, one more uh, for you, David. Uh, what are the underlying big data technologies used by LogTrust? Yeah, everything uh, has been developed uh, uh, from scratch. So everything, all the technology is proprietary, have been developed uh, by our, our developers. Um, we, at the beginning, uh, we started, you know, like uh, integrating like some open source component, components. Uh, but uh, the performance, you know, like what, what we offer is one single solution and we also uh, provide or offer uh, real time. Um, so when you start like integrating uh, different um, open source solutions or different technologies, you, you will have like uh, a delay and, and that was, that's something that it is super important for us to provide real time because for example, for, for all the security use cases, you need to be able to identify um, one attack or any, any kind of threat as soon as it happens, you know, and, and when you integrate like deep, different technologies or different open source, um, you are not able, you know, like to, to have like real time insights. Um, that's why we have developed like everything from scratch uh, and it is just one product, one single product that um, allows you to collect, uh, to analyze, uh, to visualize and, and finally, you know, like to alert or to monitor uh, what is happening. Great. Um, there are a couple of questions uh, about key lines as well. So um, we have one question, uh, which mechanism or algorithm is used in key lines for clustering or classification? Uh, so I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, Keylines is um, mainly a visualization library, but we do also have a, uh, a graph engine for doing um, uh, graph analytics, um, which could be used for the example I showed was uh, displaying the network in a, in a useful way, like highlighting clusters or highlighting important nodes. Um, and we provide a, a number of different uh, uh, tools in that library, for example, um, uh, algorithms like uh, eigen centrality, eigenvector centrality, and uh, page rank, and so on, and also uh, algorithms like k cores for clustering. We also have our own clustering algorithm, which we uh, which you can use as well. So there's a library of tools for doing graph analysis uh, if you want to do it at the visualization uh, end, at the front end. Um, so uh, again, do contact us to to know more about that. Um, there's a question, can keylines work with applications other than LogTrust, and can LogTrust work with other applications than keylines? So, yeah, from the keylines point of view, um, absolutely, keylines is a completely neutral graph engine that you can embed in any application. We have customers in a variety of industries, fraud, intelligence, cybersecurity, and many others who, um, who embed the keylines into their application. It's a very thin JavaScript um, uh, component which uh, it's very easy to integrate um, and uh, put those graph visualization technologies into the browser so there are no limitations at all into um, uh, the applications you can integrate uh, key lines with. Uh, on the LogTrust side David I don't know if you have any else to say on um, integration with third-party applications I guess is the question. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, we understand uh, that one of the um, um, uh, the challenges, you know, like every time, you know, like uh, our customers are looking for an, a big data analytics tool is to be able to um, integrate it, uh, it like uh, without any friction, you know, like in, in their own infrastructure. Um, so, uh, yes, my, my answer is yes, we can collect information from any, uh, any device, uh, including, you know, like if they have like other log aggregation tools, other uh, SIM tools, we can uh, collect information from them. And uh, after that, you know, like they, uh, there are many customers that are using us to um, de define the data models to slice and dice or reduce the amount of data. And then we can forward that information to, for example, other BI tools that are in the market, like uh, Tableau, ClickView, uh, MicroStrategy, or other reporting tools, you know, like that, uh, that they might have and they, that they might like. Uh, so yeah, my, my question is, is yes. Uh, we can definitely complement, you know, like in, in many different ways, you know, like those, those other technologies. Okay, great. So um, probably worth saying we, we have uh, we are pretty much out of time. So for those of you who, who can only stay for the uh, the allotted time, thanks very much for, for joining us. We do have one more question um, on the chat, which I'll ask for those who have time. Um, I guess this could be a question to either of us. Uh, what are the what are the um, how do you get around the spaghetti network problem? Uh, so when you're working with very large and dense graphs, um, I guess it's, it's it's always a challenge from the key lines point of view. Um, I could say something about large graphs, which is that, yeah, once you get into that regime of very large amounts of information on the screen, you start to get to a point where you're, you're potentially confusing users with too much information. So what, we do provide technologies to, to improve performance, like um, WebGL, which is all about fast rendering. Uh, but ultimately, you probably want to start reducing that clutter. Uh, we've got a lot of tools in our toolkit to help you do that. Um, you saw some examples uh, that David showed for filtering information out, so maybe filtering down by geography or by type of node so that you can get something more manageable on the screen. Um, we also have tools uh, to combine nodes together, um, which can be very nice if you want to uh, summarize a lot of nodes by just showing one, uh, one parent. So for example, um, rather than showing 100 people, you might just put them all into one uh, com combination uh, for people. Um, to uh, to simplify the chart down. So there are various uh, tips and strategies um, to uh, to help with that uh, on the key line side. David, I don't know if you had any final uh, words to to talk about dense complex networks on uh, your side. Yeah, um, I think you know like that. It is it is definitely challenging. Um, you know, like there are many 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 times. You know, like when. Um, when they have asked us, you know, like to be able to to do that, and 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 they sometimes invest like very heavily in in resources, you know, like they think about like using instead of disk, you know, like SSD memories, and 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 those, you know, like all those technologies in order to improve the performance are very expensive. Um, I will I will suggest my suggestion is like uh, uh, give give it a try, you know, like to. Uh, platforms uh, like like Logtrust, you know, like uh, libraries like Keylines, and 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 see, you know, like how 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 you can get, you know, like really good performance and and good visibility without having to spending, you know, like that much. Or before, you know, like going that path, you know, like of spending a lot of lots of money in in, in very expensive uh, technology and resources. Sounds good. Okay, and one very final question I have uh, about keylines is what are the prerequisite technologies for a developer to make use of the keylines SDK? Um, so very quickly, keylines is a JavaScript um, SDK, so that's the main skill you need. If you're familiar with JavaScript, uh, you're in uh, uh, you're in a good position. And um, and then obviously it's all about developing web applications. So experience with developing uh, web applications, um, whether that's uh, web development frameworks or um, uh, just HTML and so on. Those are the skills that uh, you would need. Um, uh, those are the main skills that you would need. But do contact us to, to learn more, and we can certainly help out if you're getting started with Keylines and uh, want to know how to uh, go about building an application with it. Okay, we are definitely out of time. We're over time, so we'll, we'll stop there. Uh, it just remains for me uh, to thank uh, our presenter, David Cifuentes from Logtrust, once again. Uh, thanks for a great presentation. Thanks to everybody for joining us. 
Uh, really appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at another Keylines webinar very soon. Thanks very much, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.